Is your audio right. gathering device <laughs> repaired? We are all good. All right. Uh, you're, you, you talked eloquently at the beginning about not wanting this to be perceived as a picture. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that this should be a political partisan exercise. And this came about after Ms. Willis's prosecution had been going on for over two years. The state Senate had done nothing to interfere or to intervene. But only in the last couple of months after the Atlanta Journal and other Atlanta news outlets began reporting a lot of troubling allegations of prosecution for personal gain, misuse of federal funds, misuse of state funds, potential improprieties, improper relationships uh, between prosecutors in the case did the state senate get interested. And the reason is because the people of Georgia are very troubled by these allegations. And it's important that we have the public's confidence in the fairness and impartiality of the criminal justice system. And that's been shaken. And this is not by allegations made by state senators, not made by political parties. They're not political allegations. These are reports that are coming from both within the Fulton County DA's office and from your investigative report. The people uh, use term whistleblowers. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are whistleblowers inside the, uh, the Fulton County DA's office that are, that are raising complaints and allegations about the misuse of both federal funds and state funds. You, know, you just you lose the confidence of the public in the fairness of our criminal justice system if they think prosecutors are engaging in prosecution so that their lovers can get rich and they can share in the benefits of that. And I, I'm not comfortable with that uh, scenario, with that perception by the public. And I'm not going to accept these as true just on their face. I love all you uh, local reporters in the Atlanta Journal. And the New York Times is here, I, I see today. You know, I'm not doubting your veracity. But we're going to independently verify it because you've raised some very, very troubling allegations. And we will have the power, having the power to compel testimony, to be able to subpoena documents, even things that are being objected to right now and from what I hear in other legal proceedings so that we can find out what the truth is. Is it a given that you will see testimony from Fannie Willis? It's not a given. No. You know, if I will certainly give her the opportunity, you know, and if I were her, I would want to be her. It seems that she is objecting to testimony in other proceedings and she may very well attempt to refuse to participate or uh, to be heard by our committee. She will have an opportunity uh, to give her explanation for things and, and with no prejudgment. I know that's hard for, for many to, to believe since I'm Republican, but I, I am uh, appointed as the chair of this committee for us to be independent, for us to be fair, for us to be transparent, and I intend to be that way and I've communicated that to members of the minority party and I think you heard their comments today uh, that they accept that, they appreciate that, and they're going to participate in this uh, process, and it's important that they do. This needs to be bipartisan so that the public will not think this is uh, an unfair process, that this is bipartisan in nature and that everybody's going to have an opportunity to be heard and to, to produce their documents that are relevant, uh, to give their testimony if that's important. Uh, but that it be thorough and that we find out what are the true facts. Nothing preconceived, no prejudgment here, but it's, it's uh, something the public deserves is to learn, is this being handled fairly? Uh, are there any improprieties going on? Is there any misuse of public funds? If so, our job's not to go after any person, but it's to make sure this doesn't happen again. Let's get Georgia laws amended or implemented that can restore faith and confidence in our judicial system for Georgia citizens. Yes, sir. Chair, you started to touch on it. You mentioned it from the during the hearing. What is the purpose of your committee? You mentioned the other committee investigating this matter. What is the purpose of your right. So in Senate Resolution 465, it clearly tells us to investigate these allegations of corruption, impropriety, misuse of public funds. 
and then to determine whether there are any necessary amendments or changes to Georgia law or any new laws that need to be passed to remedy these problems. And that's what we'll do. You know, and we, we may find that this entire system of using a special assistant district attorney rather than the, the dozens of DAs on the staff right now, that maybe there need to be some rules about relationships between special prosecutors and the person hiring them and approving their bills. Maybe there, there need to be clear rules what is and is not permitted in that process. It may be something broader than that. It may be many narrower ideas, and we're, you know, we're certainly receptive to any proposals. And we're going to look and find out what the facts are, if there are problems, if they're institutionalized, if there are things that are permitted by law, and that the laws need to, to give guardrails so we can have public confidence once again. Senator, it sounded like from your discussion that it's likely the committee's work is going to extend beyond the end of the regular session. Is that a, a fair assumption? That is almost 100% guaranteed. We're so busy during the legislative session that I, we're not going to have the opportunity to meet too many times. And it's going to take some time to accumulate the data, documentation, evidence, so to speak, that we need to to make an informed decisions here. So I would expect uh, this will go on for many months. You mentioned the hiring of outside counsel and yes. outside researchers. Um, do you have an idea of like what that might cost for this? And is that in the budget already? Yeah, we, there are funds in the budget we can utilize for that. I don't really know what that's going to cost. Um, I don't. I don't know um, who will hire. You know what they'll charge. We are not going to. Uh, be lavish in any expenditures. I can assure you that. You know that's that's one of the complaints uh, against Ms. Willis that they've spent probably a million dollars uh, prosecuting, or uh, you know, all, from a special grand jury up to indictments and a special counsel, et cetera, all that here on the case. When you've got all this backlog in the criminal justice system, you just wonder sometimes how many assistant DAs could have been hired for that million dollars that could have been prosecuting. Crimes. So I don't know. So we're not going to duplicate that and, and be just lavishly spending money. But we got to make sure that there's experts in the fields that know how to uh, properly construct and draft uh, uh, subpoenas and how to enforce those in court if need be. So we'll be looking for people with that type of expertise. I mean, I just want to make sure I understand. You said that whistleblower their depositions and testimony would be done in private. Could be. Okay, but would the actual testimony without the identification of the person become public, or is that all private? No, it can be. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be kept confidential or it can be disclosed. Part of that will be based on the, the witness's desires. But I, I think if I were an employee of the Fulton County DA's office and I knew of financial improprieties, I would want that to be kept confidential. I, I, I only know what I read in your publications, but I am told that there was a whistleblower on misuse of federal funds who was terminated after coming forward with those allegations. So if I were another employee and I had that fear, I probably wouldn't want my identity to make public uh, or, you know, and just to be until clear, I could tell my story. Does it sound from in the hearing that you have whistleblowers come forward? We have had correct? people come forward that have, would have asked to speak with us uh, with relevant information. I don't know that information yet. I've not interviewed them. But there are people uh, that have information they want to share with us. We're out of questions. All right. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you all. Have a good one. Thank, Thank you for waiting. Notice, too. Thank you.